right, how is everyone doing today? Uh, this is, for me, this will be day three of my op art lessons. So if you've been following along, um, day one, I did the kindergarten little op art positive negative art lesson. Day two, I was working on a first grade, super simple um, uh, lesson for op art where you did a pattern of colors still kind of got like opposites you could have done black and white or any kind of color and now we're going to move on to second grade now this is an adaptation from a little bit more complex lesson with markers and i'm going to go ahead and try to touch on that as well at the very end of the video but i learned that this is the easiest way for me to teach second graders how to do this kind of like three-dimensional hand and you get kind of like a fun little optical illusion, makes the hand look like it's floating, as well as I can start touching about complementary colors. Now, I talked about complementary colors yesterday in the op art video, but this time I, I asked my second graders to actually do complementary colors. So we talk about warm colors and cool colors. And if you are unaware, we've got three warm colors, which are red, yellow, and orange. And then we got three cool colors, which are gonna be blue, green, and violet. Now, I try my best to have the students pair them together. So if you did, um, I've got yellow, orange, and red here, and I would pair them together with their complement. So the complementary color of yellow is the color that is found opposite on the color wheel. So that's violet. And then for orange, it's blue. And then the easy one that all my kids seem to know is the Christmas color one, the red and green. And so they can do that. Now, Every year, I always have a few second graders that mix up. Sometimes they just do cool colors and warm colors, and I'm happy with that. I'm perfectly fine with that. But if I still like to teach them complementary colors, it makes their artwork seem to pop a little bit more. Now, this is the lesson I'm going to be talking about and showing you guys how to do, uh, the tricks to do it. But at the very end, I am going to try to finish up this one. So... This is for all you students that do not want to do the little more simplified one. This is the more complex one. This takes a little more time and you need to be precise. If you've been in Mr. Griffin's class or any of my other classes, I talk about op art and how precise and precision you need to be to try to get something to look three dimensional. So here's a really fun one. I'll finish this up at the very end, but let's go on back to this one. This is the one we're going to be teaching for all my second graders. Um, both of them are good, both of them are fun. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. So the first thing you need is a blank piece of paper. And once again, you need a ruler. Now, if you remember from yesterday's video, Mr. Griffin does not have a ruler at his house. So he made himself a little straight edge. Maybe you can do that as well. This is about an inch wide. And that's kind of what I'm gonna do this with. So uh, I also found out that my ring gets in the way when I trace it. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my ring off. If you have rings, you might want to do that as well. You're going to place your hand on your piece of paper. I like to talk about trying to make sure that your wrist is straight up and down as opposed to like off to the side. So I'm going to find my hand on there uh, in the middle of the piece of paper, and I'm going to spread my hands out real long. If you don't know how to trace your hand, here's a trick. I make sure I tell my students to keep your pencil straight up and down. Don't try to like sink your pencil underneath your wrist because you're going to have a skinny little wrist and don't also like lay it down sideways because then you'll have like fat fingers and everything. So try your best to put your pencil straight up and down. And we're going to go ahead and just trace our fingers. Please, 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 please try your best to keep your fingers still throughout this process. That way they don't like halfway up. You then move your finger and then change the shape of your finger. That'd be weird. So I'm going to go ahead and keep on going. All right. Now I've got a good little hand uh, there. Notice how I try to put my hand close to the top of the piece of paper. I know I've got like a little shadow. I was having some issues when I turned the light on it, switched cameras on me. So I'm not going to do that, uh, but I've got my hand here. Now, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to take your ruler and your straight edge. And I like to tell students to just start uh, 
the same thing that we did yesterday, where you're going to keep your lines equal distance. Don't just randomly put lines in here. So I'm going to go ahead and put my lines, um, my ruler or my straight edge, right on the edge of the piece of paper. And then this is very crucial. You are not going to draw all the way through. I need you to stop at your hand. So watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to draw and I'm going to stop like a little train. I'm going to pick it up and I'm going to go over here and draw it again and stop. Now I'm going to continue on. Don't worry about the lines inside our hand yet. We will do those next. So we're going to keep on going. Um, stopping at our hand. Now, please, please, please pay close attention. When it gets to those fingers, that's when it gets really tricky. Because they're going to have more than like one stopping point. But here we go. All right, I'm going to get to my first conjunction that's going to have more than one. So watch this. I'm going to draw. I come to my hand and I stop. I'm going to get to the other side of my hand. I notice I cannot draw through my hand. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to draw and stop at my thumb. And then I'm going to finish it off over here. Okay. So it should look kind of like that. Now, here comes it a little bit trickier. Now, it depends on how your fingers go. will depend determine how many more grooves you have. So if you look right here, I've got some issues going on. I don't have much of my hand here, but I'm going to try my best. So watch. I'm going to go ahead and draw. Stop at my pinky, draw, stop at my ring finger. I am going to go ahead and do a little drawing right there. And I can't do one right there because it's basically right underneath the, the gap. But I'm going to go ahead and come over here and finish it out and break my pencil. That's okay. All right. Now, I'm going to keep on going up. Got two more little lines. Stop. And stop, and stop, and stop. Now, guys, I've seen this uh, lesson done all over the internet before. Um, this is one of my favorite lessons that I do. Uh, I do this entire optical illusion unit with all of my students. Um, but since we are in quarantine, so if you're watching this next year, or if you're watching this a year later, and you're like, why is he doing something that everybody knows how to do? Well, Mr. Griffin does these lessons, and I don't get to teach right now. So we're all in quarantine. So if you're watching this current or today is April 1st, uh, it is a good April Fool's Day, but this is not a Fool's Day. I'm actually being serious. We really are in quarantine. And the year is 2020. All right, so here we go. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and connect these lines. But I got to connect these lines as if my hand was here. So if my hand was here, I'd have to draw over my hand. So watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to start down the bottom and I'm going to just draw like a curve. And if you make a big curve, you need to be consistent at all your spacing. If you do a small curve, it's not going to look as three dimensional. So sometimes I tell my students, the bigger, the better, but you need to be consistent. So if I go way up here on the first one, I need to go way up here on the second one. So let's just start off. I'm going to do like kind of a small little curve, but I came pretty close up to this other line. You see how I did that? So I need to make sure that all of my other curves need to come up close to the next line. Now I'm going to go on up. Create a little curve. Try to think about how your hand looks. Maybe if you get over, come over here, there might be a couple more grooves. Like right here, I'm going to kind of go over my thumb again. I see I did a little second little hump. All right, now, this is where it gets tricky again, because if you remember, now we have these like other nuances in these fingers. So I need to go up with my pinky, but I cannot start just drawing a line up. This There's no line. It has to connect. But I can pretend that I can keep on going around for my fingers and I can come down guys this is the hardest one for me this little hardest little gap now I need to come over here for my thumb and do a little gap as well I might not have done enough on that thumb but that's okay so now we're gonna do this to all of our fingers as well this one's pretty easy you're just connecting the dots 
you're connecting the dots. So this straight line needs to be connected with a curve. So I need to make sure that we put a pinky little curve on here. I need to do another little, oops, broke my pencil again. I think I'm getting a little too excited. Now, I cannot draw a straight line right here. No, I actually don't like where I put this one. I'm going to make this one a little higher. And it's okay. I don't mind making mistakes. I tell my students, if it's not right, go ahead and fix it. If, I mean, if you, if you can see where the problem is, try to fix it. Try to fix it. And I don't even know if I made it any bigger. I did a little bit bigger curve. Now, I've got a few more little curves to do. This one. This one. This one. Now, we have to also remember, if it goes up above the line, it needs one here. Now, I don't think I can even do it, but I'll just leave my finger like that. All right. So, since this one's supposed to be the example for this coloring one, now what I want you to do is you get to choose. I let my students choose whether they want to do their hand in warm colors or cool colors. So, if you want to do your hand in warm colors, you're just going to do a pattern and you're just going to go red, orange, yellow, red, orange, yellow, red, orange, yellow. Or if you want to do cool colors, you would do like blue, green, purple, or blue, green, purple. Now, I did warm color over here. So I'm going to go ahead and do cool colors. Actually, if you want to look over here, you can draw just for the fun of it. If you notice, all my gaps are equal distance. So I'm going to go ahead and come over here and I'm going to do another little curve just to add one more little slight dimension. All right. So since I did warm color over here, I'm going to do cool color. I'm not going to finish it. I'm just going to show you and I'm going to do a few of them. I'm going to do my pattern. So I'm going to start down here and do the very first one, that little curve that I did, that last little curve that I did. I'm going to go ahead and color that in purple. If I had music on, actually I have music on in the background, but I've done this before where I have music on and I don't own the rights to it. Uh, so they, they mute it, but it's in the background way, 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 way back in the background. So uh, if I had music or if I understood how to do that, I do that. So we have to do a pattern. Now, Mr. Griffin always talks about don't waste your time by going purple, green, blue, purple, green, because you're wasting time picking up all those crayons. So I'm going to say, if you grab your crayon, do a color safari. So a color safari is where you're going to pick up the purple, and you're going to look throughout your entire piece of paper, and wherever there's supposed to be purple, do that. So let's just count. It goes purple, green, blue. So this one's going to be purple. So I'm going to go ahead and do a purple right here. I'm going to continue on making sure that the purple color's in. Try your best to stay inside your line, stay inside your gaps. And as you are working uh, your magic, you're going to color all the way around. Now, this takes a little bit of time, so I'm not going to spend here turning all this, uh, but I am going to go ahead and re-show you the other one. But now look again, you gotta go purple, green, blue, purple, green, blue. So this one, this is where it gets tricky. Some people keep on going, they don't, they skip their fingers or anything. So all of these fingers that are in the same column, the same little row are all gonna be purple. So it goes purple, green, blue, and then watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and color all these individual fingers purple. All these little individual fingers Purple. Got a couple more fingers. Now, whenever you get done with all of this, I'll show you the end result again. And now, if you look, it goes purple and then green. These fingers, these three fingers are going to be green. And this little finger is going to be blue. 
Now we don't have any more purple that I have to do. So I can go ahead and stop and move on to the next color. I could go ahead and do blue. I could do green. I could do the background. Now I am going to show you once again how to do the complementary colors. So after you get all of your cool colors done, then you just have to pair it up. So anybody know what the complementary color of purple is? Right, it's yellow. So if you look right here, I know this is purple. So the corresponding column is going to be yellow. So I'm going to go ahead and just do yellow. And then I could go ahead and do the same color safari with my yellow that I do with my purple and just go all the way up and down matching my yellow. Now, I know some of you guys are watching and say, uh, Mr. Griffin, I'd like to get onto the marker one. That one looked cooler. I'm older. I don't want to do this one. Well, I'm going to go ahead and finish a little bit more of this one. And then I will get to that mark one. I do promise you guys that. Or I guess you guys could just fast forward to the marker one just to see the finished results. So it goes yellow. And then what, what, whatever color this one's going to be. And this one, this one would be yellow again. And then if this is yellow, this is uh, red, this is orange. Guess what this one's going to be? So we already know that this one's going to be yellow. This one will be yellow. And so on. So. Let's go ahead and look at this one, the end result. If you can get this all done, you should have something like that. All right. Everyone say serious. Serious. All right. We're going to go ahead and check out this marker one. So I know some of you guys were interested in this one. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this one. And I'm going to show you what I've done and show you how I did it. I actually took some markers. And I did every other step the same way that I had been doing all the other ones. I traced my hand, I did my pencil marks, and I still did the curves. Now, I kind of, like I said, I messed up right here, and I got too closed in. I didn't keep my gap and my spacing the same distance. But we're going to go ahead and continue on to see how things would look. So, the last color that I did um, was purple down here. So I'm going to go ahead and, and I call it violet purple. I don't care what you call it. Uh, I know some people are pretty particular, but I'm going to go purple right here, purple right here. And for those of you guys who are wondering what kind of markers these are, these are some master touch alcohol based markers. Uh, I've got lots of alcohol based markers, but you can use any kind of marker you would like, kind of like the saturation and everything. So. If you look over here, we're going to go ahead and start right here. It goes red, orange, and I continue on. I'm going to go ahead and do these little columns to show you how I would do the rest. And then we'll finish this up with purple. So I've got red, orange, and then yellow. So watch. The yellow is going to just go straight across that finger. And then when it gets to this finger... It's got to curve up. You have to follow the last line that you did. Now, you're going to have to curve up. Now, this is the difference than doing this the pattern one that I did earlier with the crayons. This one, you're going to be doing just continuing straight lines all the way across. And you follow that first initial pencil curve that you had um, now, if you look right there, I did not keep on curving up. The reason why I did not curve up, because it's not on my finger. I'm trying my best to stay straight. So the only thing that's on the tip of that finger is the red. So I'm going to continue on. Here's another finger so I can curve up on that one. Go straight. Once again, I might be able to get a little bit above the finger if I do a straight line. If not, there's not going to be any yellow in that finger. Because the finger covers it up. Okay. And then here's that yellow right up top. Red, orange, yellow, green. And I come over here. Notice how I'm trying my best to get to the finger and then I curve up. So 
Hopefully my head's not getting in the way. I'm getting, I'm having a lot of fun just coloring. Hopefully you guys are having fun as well. If not, well, come back next time. Come back tomorrow. Maybe we'll find something else to do. All right, there's my green. I might have a little bit of room. Up top. I don't have much room. I was trying to cover up, see part of my paper. All right, red, orange, yellow, green. We're going to do blue. And then I'm going to show you how to do the whole thing violet. And I'm hoping that that'll be a finished work. So. Is that blue? Okay, that's blue. If there's got gaps, you can actually like just come back in. You're going to see me uh, in just a second with that purple. I'm going to be filling in a whole bunch more gaps. Um, no, there's not much space, so. There's my blue. All right, now. I'm going to make this blue a little bit bigger here, first off, because I know that I'm going to have to basically color that all in purple. So here's the last step. I already did purple way down here. Now I'm going to go ahead and just do purple, and we can work from our top down. Purple, violet. I don't have an indigo in this one. Sorry, guys. All you indigo fans. Now, like I said, I'm going to just go ahead and fill in any of my gaps and fill in the, the white part for my three-dimensionality. Little curves. This one's a lot harder. I did this with second grade uh, one year. And guys, I did not have a lot of success uh, I had some amazing students that did a good job. I'm not saying that all my students messed up, but they couldn't stay consistent. Uh, they couldn't make the curves big enough uh, to make it look three-dimensional. Um, so we, we weren't having a lot of success with it. So I moved to the easier, yet still educational, using complementary colors and just uh, positive negative shapes. Um, see, as you can tell, I kind of messed up right here. I can't even put a purple in there, but I'm going to just give it up. There's my purple here. Now, like I said, this area kind of messed up as well. I made the gap too big. So I'm going to just put a whole bunch of purple in there. If you keep with the pattern, don't like make new patterns or don't add new colors, it's going to look good. And last but not least, Now, what I just did there, uh, you would just continue on uh, with, of all the colors, if you wanted to do something more like this. And you can tell that looks kind of three-dimensional. looks like my hand is floating in a rainbow pattern. You don't have to do rainbow. You can do any colors you want. You can pick your own pattern. Um, but as long as you keep the same distance and your same rulers, you should have something pretty good. I know this is a longer video. Uh, I don't know how many of you guys are going to watch it all. It was very therapeutic to me. I know that in this time of quarantine, things are crazy. So let's create. Let's have fun. Uh, let's love on each other just from a distance. 
wash your hands, have fun. Love you guys.